Let's get miniature! We made a miniature world. Wow, your friend! No more. Where's that super armor killing machine again? Hey, Roderick, great to see you, man! Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> you're just a piece of plastic. I, I know, I know. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Hey friends and fellow crafters, welcome to the DM's Craft, DM Scotty here. Now you know me as the cheap and easy DM. I like to make it cheap and easy, and I like to go to the dollar store for that reason, because I find things that inspire me for only a dollar. Now I found these beads, these square beads, and this inspired me to make today's craft. Today's craft are gonna be pedestals, these thematic pedestals that can add a lot of flavor to scenes that you have in your game. So just for a dollar, all these 85 beads, you can make tons of pedestals out of. So let's hit my table and I'll show you what I mean. Now these beads are perfect and I really like the rounded edges on them. So you know if you cut all these out individually and you know had to round the edges on them that would be a ton of work. So say you cut these out of foam or something it's all that extra work where you know with this you just spend a dollar you've got 85 of these out of a bag you know ready to go. Another thing that's nice about these kind of things is they're hard, you know, um, unlike foam or, you know, it'd be uh, much easier to break or to damage. These are solid. They're solid wood. So unless you throw this against the wall, you know, you're not going to damage this thing. And something like this is a great prop for, you know, rooms to add flavor to the room. There's so many different styles and themes you can do with these pedestals, you know, anywhere from a dark altar to, you know, a holy altar of light or anything in between. So you can use these to really get, you know, a nice theme going in the room, uh, you know, add to the ambience of the room. My style of gaming with terrain is like when you go to a play, right? Where they darken the stage and they run in real quick and they change up everything. <laughs> and then you're at the next scene. That's how I run my games. I don't want to sit there, you know, placing little teeny objects, you know, everywhere in the scene, right? Um, I want broad strokes of things. Now, with these pedestals, you could say that's an extraneous thing, but you know, anything that adds to the theme or the thematic look of the encounter, I think is value added, right? So these, all these different styles, you have great themes like, you know, this ne necrotic altar and you have, you know, I've got a holy one and, you know, uh, blue flames and all this kind of stuff. I've got all these different uh, looks that I think really add to the set that you're, that you're presenting to the players. Not only do these look great and add a lot of you know ambiance to the room, you can use them uh, mechanically. So say you know the necrotic uh, pedestals, the crystal skulls on top, you have to shatter. You know they take a certain amount of damage, or the crystals you have to activate that kind of thing, or the braziers you can knock over and light light foes on fire. So you know you can use these in all different kinds of ways mechanically in your games to enhance the stuff. It's like that's when terrain meets what the players think they can do in the game like gives them ideas that's really cool when the terrain itself gives the players ideas to do you know as opposed to theater of the mind where they may not see everything and they may not realize you know they may not put it together in their head but when they see it as a set in front of them that they there that their players can interact with that's when the magic happens of them thinking of stuff or you can imply through play that, hey, you're not doing anything stopping this ritual, maybe there's something else we need to do, right? And they figure out that it's the crystal skulls, okay, <laughs> on top of the pedestals. So that's really, I think terrain can give you a next level of play, actually, by giving players these ideas. And when you run your games, give you know players clues to what this kind of terrain stuff does. So maybe they can see the dark energy coming off of the skulls and they realize hey wait a minute this is something to do with the ritual right maybe we should break these skulls or knock these pedestals over so you want to convey that through your gameplay it's not just the terrain the terrain gives the players a place to focus but your descriptions the way you lay out the world for them that's what gives them the ideas to take it further. Hey, I'm Blue All. Hi. 
keep that crafter's eye open. You know, whenever you go somewhere and there are cheap things you can pick up or buy or at garage sales, think about what you could use with these pieces. Not what they look like, what they could become. And that I'm constantly thinking about that when I see these kind of things at the Dollar Tree. You know, what can I make this? You know, these beads. They're just uh, square, rounded beads. What can these become? Because I've only spent a dollar on them and I've got a ton of them now. And that crafter's eye transforming things that were just junk or not intended for the purposes that you're going to use them for crafting uh, could just save you so much time. You know, um, if I had to cut these out of foam and then, you know, not only that, rounded the corners, you know, like sanded the corners, you know how much time that would have taken to do that? With this, it was just glue these beads together, you know, slap some texture paste on them and I'm done, you know, and then, and then cap them with whatever interesting aspect uh, or bit and bob that's going to make them, you know, thematic. So, you know, that's the kind of thing you want to cultivate in your crafting because it will save you so much time. If you craft everything, you know, from scratch or, you know, carve it out of foam or whatever or sculpt it, you know, it's so much more time than what we just did with this project. <laughs> you know, this, uh, you know, it looks great. It really, you know, these projects look great. Uh, and you really didn't spend much time on them. Uh, and you got a fantastic result. It's funny, in the olden days of my channel, I used to get asked, you know, how did you think of that, right? Where that's much less of a common question these days. Because this way of thinking, of using other things to make something else that looks great for your table, has become much more commonplace. So many other channels have embraced this, you know, to take this kind of junk uh, or things that weren't, in, you know, intended to be what you, they become and transforming them with some paint uh, into something that looks great for your table. So it's interesting how, you know, the community has evolved from that. And I, I just don't get that question anymore. People just don't ask me that anymore. How the heck did you come up with this? Which when I started, it was that was a, a question I got quite a bit and I think that's great because that means the crafting community is moving you know has moved into that point where they're looking at the world through the crafter's eye as we always say here go forth and craft and thank you all for watching see you next time well, hello, friends and fellow RPGers. I would like to introduce you to the North Road Campaign! 424 pages of awesome, system-neutral content! The North Road is an entire campaign with 12 full modules and four quick quests. You can pick up your hard copy at questgivers.com.